In 2016, when the Anglophone crisis started, the teachers advocated for a better working condition and wanted that the system of education should be harmonized in such a way that Anglo-Saxon culture would be protected. The lawyers on that part wanted a common law system to be implemented. Since when they were uh, maltreated in Moya and moved to Bamenda, the common government responded by creating an interministerial ad hoc committee in Yaoundi, in which the government stated that they would look into the common law system. Lots of water has gone down the bridge and we are now in 2021. What lies the fate of common law in Cameroon and looking at the pace of decentralization? The Cameroon government is of the opinion that accelerated decentralization will help resolve the conflict in the ongoing uh, northwest and southwest region and will also facilitate the implementation of common law system and vis-a-vis -vis the civil law system which is being practiced in other regions of Cameroon. In all of this context, the common man is caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, not understanding the deep context and the level of implementation so far. And also, we are used to the cliché that you are under arrest, you have a right to remain silent for anything you say or do will be used as an evidence against you in the court of law you have a right to a lawyer and if you don't have one the state will provide you one by looking at the current reality on ground one is tempted to say it is the other side of the coin this is house of commons with me tamai javis You're welcome back from that brief transition. If you are just joining us, you're watching House of Commons. It is a program that comes to you every Sunday at exactly 12 to 1.30 p.m. And the rebroadcast is on Sunday at 10 p.m. And 9.30 p.m. on Monday, we have a rebroadcast. Today's edition of our program, we are looking at three topics which we shall be digressing and vis-a-vis -vis also looking at what makes news around the globe. But before then, I introduce to you my guest with whom we are going to discuss on today's program. In Yaoundé, though we are still struggling to get connected to him, he is Professor Evans Golengwele who will be joining us as we unfold or continue with our discussion. Here in the studio, we have Dr. Nick Nguanyam, who is a social entrepreneur and he is also grounded with issues plaguing Cameroon. He's a father of more than the confederation which he has been proposing that it will help to solve the problems of Cameroon and ensure that Cameroon prosperity moves history. Dr. Nick Nguanyam, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good afternoon to all our listeners. Um, very exciting topics today, but um, I'm glad that a barista is here that you're going to introduce because uh, I'm not very versed with the law. So when it comes to some of those things of the law, I might be talking as a, um, as a man on the street, but he understands best what it's all about. But um, in most of our discussions, you see, I'm going to stick to some of the things I've been saying before because, you see, we are in Bafusam and we have as intention to go to Yaoundé. But if you enter your car and you start, you start driving to Bamenda and you are asking me what obstacles are on the road to Bamenda, then I will tell you the, the issue is about going to Yaoundé, not to Bamenda. And therefore, this issue of the law that you have brought about, uh, how is the law working in decentralization, I will tell you that you are not driving to Yaoundé, you are driving to Bafusam, and that's why it's going to be pretty sticky in this room. Uh, thank you very much. Also, here yeah, we are joined by Paris and Kia Emmanuel, who has been here with us, but not on House of Commons, on different programs in my media prime television. Paris and Kia, thanks for joining us. Thank you, uh, Jarvis. Um, I've just listened to the rundown on, of the issues for discussion, and um, uh, there are quite contemporary issues which need to be discussed. Because um, if we look at the, the present dispensation, sociopolitical and even legal, you agree with me that we, we, we are actually, um, uh, you know, we are actually in a process of regression. And we are not progressing, we are not making any constructive move ahead. And this is some, some of the issues that we need to address in order to move ahead as a nation, as a people. 
uh, thank you more, very much, Barista. Um, also joining us in uh, Limbe is uh, Barista Toko, Barista Toko, a bar of uh, Justice Law Firm, who is uh, standing by. Barista Toko will begin with you by asking you, um, let's get your take on the common law uh, in Cameroon. The common law is a legal system based on past judgments, star decisis, and it's unwritten. While the civil law, if I have to compare with the common law, uh, is based on statute and written law. In Cameroon, we have a bi-jural system. We have the common law practice in the English-speaking part of the country, and the civil law practice in the French part of the country. It is part of our tenets, our custom, and tradition. It is a faster and flexible law. It's the kind of law that you get it easy where judgments are delivered based on past judgments, not on statute, not on written laws, but what has been happening in your environment. So if you have a judgment today on, on theft, and there's a case on theft, if it is, the facts are similar, then the judgment will render almost the same as what happened in the precedent. So that is the situation of common law. And common law in Cameroon is practiced in this part of the country with the kind of solemn courts that we have. The judges, they pass their judgments on the law and the conscience. So basically that is what we can give about the common law. First, uh, uh, anglophone lawyers, common law lawyers were disgruntled because most of the laws in Cameroon were written in French and they were already translated in English. So we felt disgruntled that no, the common law has its place in this country. The common law has its mark. And so we should be recognized as a law in the country going alongside the other law, which is the civil law. So the, the common law lawyers thought it was that they should remind the government that the common law is still part of our legal system. And how do we have to do this? We had to write a memo telling the, the government what the common law is, how it is practiced, and that if it has to be eroded, it's going to cause a lot of damage in this part of the country. Um, thank you very much, Barista. Um, I continue with you, Barista Nkia, before moving to Dr. Nick, um, so that he will look at the political issues. Uh, Barista Nkia, now, li after listening to uh, Barista Ntoko, uh, I want to get a, another perspective from this Oh. Yes, um, I think that I can only compliment yeah. what uh, Barista Ntoko said. Uh, to add that um, common law is actually a system of law that is based on certain core principles. And those core principles are principles of fairness, equity. Such that, you know, once there is an issue, even if it is based on statute law, we, we argue that there can be no wrong without a remedy. Those are, those are the kind of things that, because now you look at the, the, the harmonization process that is ongoing in the country. You take, for example, the criminal procedure code, which has been harmonized and practiced in, 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 in both sides of the country, almost in the same fashion. You discover that prior to that time, the period of harmonization, you know, we had, we used to rely on principles that you know, for example, if the, 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 you, you, you lose a case, you are convicted on a serious crime like murder, and uh, you, perhaps in the trance in which you find yourself, you're unable to file an appeal within the time frame, the courts could still give you the opportunity to do so by filing for uh, asking for extension of time you show good reasons why you did not file within the time frame and then you know the courts will evaluate that and if it is just and they see from your uh, from your writ that there are good grounds for which you can challenge the judgment had, that had just been passed on you they could allow you to appeal but under the present dispensation it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that. And so those are the things that we're trying to see, to say that, look, when you are making laws, you should make laws that are more progressive, laws that are more, more protective, right? Should not be repugnant yes. to natural justice. Oh, of course. Those are, those, those, those are some things that made common law what it is. Like uh, Barisantoko also mentioned the issue of uh, uh, translation of 
laws passed by parliament in this country, you discover that most often the laws are passed in French. And then they are done they are given some proximate English translation so that the lawyer in the common law region of the country finds it difficult in applying the text. I give you one classic example. If you look at the criminal procedure code, you look at section 128. Section 128 talks of the parties in a criminal trial. And it says that the legal department, I'm telling you issues of translation, in the English version, it says the legal department is a principal party and that if the legal department is absent, the court cannot sit. The court will be improperly constituted. No judgment, all judgment renders will be null and void. Now, if you look at the French version, it tells you the minister public. The minister public is not the same thing as the legal department. The, the you, you know in, in in the English equivalent it should have been the, the public prosecutor and but then you come in the application of the law and because the public prosecutors in the English speaking regions of the country are conscious of that defective translation yeah. they avoid using the word legal department <laughs> and then they go to something that is not provided for by the law they go to the, the people of Cameroon which is not provided for in the law and so when you have a system of law that fluctuates, that functions on the women caprices of people, rather than the rule of law, which is, which is one of the coordinates of common law, then yeah. you find that there is bound to be problems here and there. There is bound to be injustice. Yeah. Yes. So those are the things that we are trying to say. To say that, you know, common law is not just the fact that uh, some people who speak English Think that they should no 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 it's about the court well, that's the mentality of a lot of people out there who feel like it's because some people who speak english i'm happy you are, you are, you are explaining that in detail no you see you see that that is a very uh, dishonest and deliberate is it's, it's a deliberate falsehood because i have had the opportunity to say before that it is not because you speak english that uh, you are a common law person. Common law is like, it's like a culture. It's something that is intrinsic in you. How you were brought up, you know, respecting the courts, respecting rules, knowing that if you come late at this time, you'll be punished in school. Those are the kind of things. It is inbuilt in us. And you will find that in this side of the country, we have had people from tribes in former East Cameroon, mm. who have been judges, who have risen to top ranks, right? But it was more because, I, I, I give you one clear example. You must have heard about Justice Nana. Yes. Justice Nana is from the Bamilike extraction. But he was born and bred in the Southwest all his life. So the culture, you know, he acquired it a long time yeah. as, as he grew up. You know of Justice Demo, he's in yeah. the Court of Appeal. He's a family, he's also, also from family extraction. So it is not the tribe from which you come from or the language in which you're able to speak. It's the it culture. Is, it's the culture. It's the culture. And that is why you are bound to see clear distinctions when you meet two uh, 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 prof, uh, legal professionals from these two divides. You're bound to see some clear, even from their mode of dressing. Sure. The amount of talking to the courts it's different. So we are saying that those are the things that make us as a people. That you know, and the whole idea that lawyers rose up in 2016 was an attempt at self-preservation. Right? It was an attempt at self-preservation to argue that by historical facts we have been two people, one, one country. country. And that if we must continue to live together in harmony, that basic, that essential aspect must be maintained at all times. And part of it is keeping us, allowing us to practice the culture which we have grown in, the way we know life to be. 
Okay, um, thank you very much, um, Bryce and Kia. We'll be coming back to you. Um, if you're watching us, you want to ask a question, the numbers on your screen, um, you can send us a text, SMS, or you also send us, um, you know, WhatsApp text on the numbers on your screen. Uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam, uh, you listen to the two uh, barristers. Um, I want to ask you this question. Uh, Bryce and Kia talked about the issue that two people, one country, and that this is how we were and that the, the, the common law is a culture and you are of the confederation and the common government keeps um, trumpeting the sound of effective decentralization now rebranded to accelerated decentralization and you are of the opinion that confederation is best to save this common law, this culture that uh, Barisan Kea and Barisan Toko they are talking about oh, Thank you very much <coughs> Do you understand me today? I would want to, you know the whole time he was talking, I'm, I've been trying as best as I can to explain what the Anglophone problem is and where it's coming from. And the best way I usually do it is to be illustrative. I don't know, I just like illustrations. And then, that's the part A. And the part B, to say that whatever came out of this, uh, of the major national Yeah, dialogue, you, were, you were at the major national yes, dialogue. I was there. And it is agreed now where we are that the major national dialogue, watch my lips, failed. And therefore, whatever came out of it, it doesn't matter which commission, it's not helpful. I'm just making as a statement of fact. And then to continue in the same reasoning to say that there is a dialogue that would come to correct all of that, and that His Excellency President Paul Beer is very interested in reconciliation and unity in the nation now. I wanted to just give those facts so that this is very clear. So um, that said, how do we understand the Anglophone problem? I'm trying to explain because some people would say that there is people give three, there are three groups of reasons that people give to explain the Anglophone problem. Some would say that it's a problem with decolonization, which was not properly done. Some will say that it is um, it is the marginalization, the bad governance, and the cancellation of the federalism. And then some will say that it is the issue of the teachers and the lawyers. You, you see these three yeah. arguments? Yeah. And then for those people who want to play tricks like you, like the like the parliament recently, they wrote a letter to somebody in America, <laughs> and then they say, no, One there was... Yeah, 64. Yeah, there was, a, there was a problem of lawyers and teachers, and so on. No, 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 that's a lie. That's not the Anglophone problem. And to be, to be able to understand this very well, let us, let us take a woman who is cooking some soup, and she starts off by boiling the meat, or the fish, or the snake, or the whatever, okay? Now, so that is the main thing. She is boiling that, and she starts off by cooking that. Then somewhere along the line, she adds some vegetables, and, uh, and, and does a, a few tricks to it. The soup is not yet done. Then, just about the end of the story, she puts in some crayfish and some salt. Okay, I'm painting. So you see, it's still the same soup, but different things are happening at the same time, and it's still the same pot, and you end up with this result. Let us put it another way. There is a bushfire, but you can't light a bushfire in a wet in a wet forest. First. There is a drought, and then the forest gets dry, and more trees get dry, and things get dry, and everything, the streams dry off. Then, at the last minute, someone lights a match. Someone lights a match. That match, you could also refer to it as the last straw that broke the camel's back. Or in French, la dernière goutte d'eau qui a débordé le ver. The... I remember once when I was in primary school, the, the, there was an incident. There was some, one man who had a bicycle, and and uh, I, we, 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 a friend of mine begged for that bicycle and was riding it, and then he broke the pedal. And the issue was that he had broken the pedal. But the truth is, when we look at it today, the young man who, who, who asked for the bicycle did not break the pedal. It's just that the pedal had been giving way, and he was so unfortunate. When he took it, the thing <laughs> collapsed. And, I mean, he kind of like gave up the ghost in his hands. So that is it. Now, that said, this is it. Yes, we had a problem of decolonization, okay, which was incomplete. And that's the cry of all of 
Africa and other countries, and that's why there is this other movement that is coming. This this movement that uh, Professor, all these professors are. Uh, uh, the, the, the one of the white Cameroon. No, 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 not Cameroon. The whole of Africa. That's Pan Africanism. Yeah, the Pan Africanism. So, so the Pan Africanism yes. is, you know, is the argument is based around these issues of decolonization. decolonization. And Cameroon was part of that. When it comes to Cameroon, you could say, of course, that there's the, because there's a French and English thing that is in the mix. That is part A. Part B. As I explained, it started, if you want to understand Part B very well, go back and listen to President Paul Bia speaking to Mr. Mo Ibrahim and the world at the Paris Peace Summit. This was about three or four months after the major national dialect. And it was so unfortunate that he was giving this, this, this brilliant speech and explanation four months after the failed national dialogue. Because that failed national dialogue, we call it a dialogue, but it was a failed national monologue. So if he had said what he said before, the results of that dialogue would have, dialogue would have been different. You he said we're in the process of... That is right. Because what did he say? He said... They were, they, they were be, in essence, he said that the, 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 the majority francophone had been trying to usurp the anglophones and turn them into francophones. Am I correct? Yes. If I'm wrong, correct me. <laughs> I mean, that's the essence of what he was saying. And that that experiment had failed. And in the third place, he says, they were looking forward to a better option, which would be to let them be who they are. Am I correct? Those three things. If you forget that, then, then, then you can as well go home. Keep to that and hang on it, and you get what you want. Don't let it go. So, and um, so it is this thing that is the, the cancellation of the federation, the marginalization, the bad governance, especially the bad governance, that makes a bad situation worse. So it was that cake of fire. Is the dry firewood that has been piling, heap on heap. Then, the the lawyers and the teachers show up with a match, <laughs> and the spark goes off. And then these parliamentarians, they sit up and say, no, the problem is the match. The problem is not the match. That's where we make the mistakes. Am I, am I, am I very clear? And yeah. I, I hope that I've explained myself to people. So if someone says the, the Anglophone problem is a problem of decolonization, he's not wrong. There, there is a question with three, with part A, part B, and part C. He's partially, he has got one third of the max. If he adds that there is, um, there is a marginalization, uh, cancellation of the federal federation and bad governance, bad governance and, and what have you he's got the part B right and then he says that the lawyers the, the lawyers and the teachers they lead the match he is still right but if you take only one you are not correct and the idea would be to come back to a position where the country can function well but watch my lips the decentralization as we have it now coming out of that major di national dialogue is a problem and what should properly happen so that what the lawyers are looking for should work well would be a two-tier a two-tier uh, breakdown of the nation i don't want to use the word de uh, decentralized uh, breakdown of the nation take the nation of cameroon as it is now break it down call call the other part west cameroon as it used to be call this other part east cameroon as it used to be then now take your current decentralization and and carry out that activity within these two states separately. And then, one more important thing. It's very, very important. It doesn't matter what you do, but it should be very clear that we have to come to a point where SDUs, DUs, and governors are elected and not appointed. Because I will tell you, watch my lips, Enam is responsible for 80% of the problems in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Briefly, before um, Bryce and Kia add, and let me briefly, you attended the Measure National Dialogue. Did they talk about the common law survivability briefly? So that Bryce and Kia. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I was also a participant of okay. The, okay. the National Dialogue. And I was just going to step into what Prof. Was, uh, Dr. Nick was saying because I was actually in the commission on judicial system and uh, it was it, 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 the debates there were very very heated and the consensus which came out of that those debates were that no not all laws are harmonizable in the first place because they were in, a, in an attempt to come out with something they called the civil code which was supposed to have completed the, 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 the annihilation process of the common law. Yeah. And we withdrew the attention to see why 
that wasn't going to work on or, or how that was going to create more problems. Basically, there were resolutions that we arrived at in those commission. One was that they should create a common law section in ENAM if ENAM was still to be as an institution that treats majesty, they should create a common law section in ENAM. Not something that is done on an ad hoc basis. Because the Minister of Justice was, who was in that commission had argued to us that the reasons why civil trained majesty, civil law trained majesty were posted to the Northwest and Southwest was because there was a shortage of, uh, of, of personnel. <laughs> And we, we, we say, but if there has been a shortage of personnel, <laughs> it means that in the admission process into ENAM, it was conducted in such a way that will produce the shortage. shortage. <laughs> but under the way to, since we were now looking for a way forward, create a common law section. Not an ad hoc thing, because he tried to uh, um, suggest to us that at, at the time, the head of state had given instructions for some common law special recruitment. And we said it should not be done on an ad hoc basis. It had to be done on a permanent basis. basis. And that again, they argued that the, the 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 government had ordered the creation of a, a, a common law, English law departments mm -hmm. in all state mm -hmm. universities. But then they argued that the common law was 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 was, was not no longer. Uh, uh, necessary. So we ask the question: <laughs> If you are creating departments of English law, what are you teaching them there? <laughs> now, when they graduate, what are they going to apply? So you you are creating one problem by trying to solve another one because the the, the, the effect will be that by the time these children leave school and the common law has been completely wiped out, there will be a crisis in that they will not be able to fit in the market because what they studied is no well, longer well, well, relevant well, well. and and so they argued that we argued and it was recommended and that in the english speaking regions of cameroon those who practice the profession of magistrates should be people who come from the, the what you call the the the, 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 the anglo-saxon background not just somebody who speaks english but those who are trained in that culture because you would notice that we have had the the, 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 the impression should not be given that anglophones don't like francophones that is not the thing that is not the thing because if you come to anywhere in even in east Cameroon, you find them interacting you can't there have never been that problem of viva and sam no there's never been that problem mm -hmm. But when you bring people to administer justice and these people have a culture of being high-handed, it creates a problem. It creates a problem. When I was young, we used to run to, to the police station yes. to report that somebody has done something wrong. And that when you saw a police officer, you felt protected. You felt secured. But today, if you see a police officer, the next thing is that you want to run. I don't know if you get yeah. one. Yeah. So the whole thing is being diluted to such a point that um, we are beginning to lose our identity. And like, like, like Dr. Nick said, we are coming, it's not a matter of failed decolonization even. It is a matter of two people coming together as one nation. In their diversity. Yes, and that when President Bia spoke in the Paris Peace Conference. He was that was in English common law. We call it a confession. Yeah. Now he was confessing. If he was a, in a trial, we we'll say that he had given a confession, or it was an admission to use a lesson to say that all along there has been a, 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 an agenda, <laughs> yes. and that he, he admitted that uh, you know it has failed. Mm -hmm. So what we should be looking at now, if this agenda has failed what is the workable option that can still keep this country together i think that and that is what the lawyers advocated in 2016 and that is what lawyers are still saying today okay. a few or some of them let me not say a few some of them have even taken the extreme position because we argue that there was nothing very wrong with federalism 
as it was in 1961 up to 72. There was nothing really wrong. The government said it was too expensive to manage. Well, it being expensive, the war that we have been fighting for five years, is it cheap to manage? You know, you have to compare two things. And you will see that it is because of this deliberate process of assimilation we felt threatened. And, and like I said before, it was an, an exercise in self-preservation. We, we had to rise up to say, no, please, let us go back to where we were. You know that workable formula that we all respected ourselves. And then they said, no, we can, we can discuss everything, but we cannot discuss the form of the state. And we said, and look, the Constitution itself makes it possible for opinions to be shared and that is where we are today so when the government decided to come in with decentralization what is decentralization now they say accelerated it's no longer decentralization it's accelerated they are accelerating what because when you look at it yeah, when you look at it when you look at it you see that at the under the decentralized structure what has come in as a new element is the fact that okay you have something they call the regional house and the regional house is supposed to do certain things but what are the powers of the regional assembly when again the 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 the, 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 the president of the regional assembly is installed by the governor the governor is appointed the i mean just look at it from that context there is yeah. a special uh, uh, representative that, from the head of state who reports directly to the head of state. You see, my brother, those are the dishonest aspects of this thing that we are complaining about. Let us come back to where. If you ask me today, tomorrow, till Jesus comes again, I will tell you that the workable system for this country is a federal structure. Now, because we have done it before, it has worked. We have never tried decentralization. We are trying to, to experiment it. It's already failing, even from the start. And I think that once the government still proceeds with these dishonest debates of saying that now it's accelerated decentralization, it's not going to be, you know, they are only radicalizing people. They are only radicalizing people. If they had you know, submitted themselves to discussion and proper dialogue in 2016 and admitted that indeed let them put the, the debate on of, of, of federal structure in parliament, table a bill in parliament, would have pacified the situation, would have pacified the situation. And um, I think that where we are today is unfortunate. Lives have been lost, property destroyed because we refuse to dialogue. Okay. I think that we can remedy that by talking again and accepting that and recognizing that one workable formula is to rush back to where we were. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Barista and Toko. Um, I want to ask you this. Are you satisfied with the level of implementation of common law? If we look at what the panelists have been talking about, uh, are you satisfied with the level of implementation? It is true the government has done something, but it is not enough. We're not asking for a section of the common law in the Supreme Court. We're asking for a division in the Supreme Court, so that we, it, is, it should be autonomous. It's, it's a ladder that flows from the Court of First Instance, from the, the Court of Federal High Court, from the court, to the court of Appeal, and to the Supreme Court. So the, the, the section which you call in the Supreme Court should not be the section. It should be an autonomous bench of the Supreme Court, far different from what the, the Supreme Court, the civil session, or the civil, the civil bench is doing. So if we have that trend, whatever leaves the common law court of appeal should go straight to the common law bench of the Supreme Court. It has no, it does not have to pass through uh, uh, a ladder that's a, of the Supreme Court that wants to warrant it to go wherever they want to. Let the common law bench determine how it should be run the other level. So Nick, uh, you want to react to uh, what uh, Barrister Toko and Barrister and Kia were saying before I ask you my question based on our confederation? Because we, Barrister and Kia is 
talking about the two, the federation as we were in, in, in 1961, 1962, right up to 72 when it was abolished. And the government is claiming that um, we are, federation is way too expensive. By Stankia is breaking down the structure and telling us, especially looking at the regional. Now we now have the regional assembly in all the ten regions. We have a lot of uh, expenditures. So, how can confederation work in preserving this common law and the autonomy? Uh, for starters, when we say that we don't want a federal structure because of cost, it's a lie. Because if you look at um, even the regions as they are now, uh, I think when he was naming them. Uh, as it helped me, there is a governor, yeah. there is a the yes. president of the what regional era, council, regional and assembly. then there is a secretary general yeah, of the regional assembly. Of the regional assembly. assembly. There is a secretary general at the at governor's, governor's office. office. Then there is some other. There is a secretary general at the. We have uh, we have the SDU. You see, we are already getting confused. Let's start again. Paris, I am. There is a governor. I mean, I'm talking about that. There is a governor. There is a there is a president. Like Doctor Angwafo. Yes. Okay. Then there is a yeah, yeah. two secretary generals because they have their own secretary general. Yeah, the and governor then the governor has, has their own secretary general. Appointed. Appointed. Right? Yes. All appointed. <laughs> then there is there is a conciliator. Conciliator. Somewhere. Yes. Five. Oh, yes. Public five people. Conciliator. And then now the thing keeps going. So five times ten. See, and when you say it's expensive, it's not expensive because already. You are, you are of course aware that the Cameroon is owing a lot of money, right? Yes. We have borrowed so much, but you don't see what we have done. So it is that bad governance that we are talking about. There's no accountability. There's no excellence in anything, because to show you, to show you that it is it is it is the bad governance and the lack of excellence excellence in what we do that is getting us so expensive you know i have kept challenging people i say as a people as cameroonians if we talk of a country like Ethiopia, we can say what are they known for we know their airlines it's great kenya what are they known for besides so many things agriculture and so on they have a great airlines tell me two things for which we are known that are positive football no no oh, football even the football we thought we had is it's gone. gone. It's gone. So we we don't show excellence in anything. Apart from corruption. Apart from <laughs> no, that's the, that's the negative one. I'm looking for the because because we we ex, we we excel in negative things. But what are the positive things we excel in? I mean, a little thing like government gives money. The international community gives money to help the lives of people with COVID-19. The guys steal the money. It's you you, you see. That is so. You are telling me even the bags of rice that were given prior stolen. to to the, the so, uh, shutdown. Nobody. Is the problem is with our character. We are thieves. We, we, we don't respect public property. We, you know, you can, I mean, a thief remains a thief. So don't 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 put that and say uh, federalism. Actually, if we put in federalism now and say the people are responsible for looking after their goods and so on, the thieves will reduce. So that is not that's not an issue. It was just one of those things. Put create a booyah. That's expensive. It just it was just a reason for, for for knocking off things. Not because mm -hmm. just because they don't want the federalism is a motif. Okay, it was just a motif. That said, the question is, how do we make the nation function? Yeah. And to understand that very well, I told you there's a dialogue that is coming. And if someone asks you, what at this material moment in Cameroon, what is the, you know, Cameroon has a lot of problems, A, B, C, D. What is the greatest problem that challenges Cameroon is the Anglophone problem. If somebody asks you, if you woke up from sleep at midnight, someone asks, just say Anglophone probably will be right. Number two, what is, you know, if you are looking for the solutions to the Anglophone problem, you can say A, B, C, D, D, do this, do this, do this. Oh, the lawyers have been this, common law, blah, 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 all that's noise. Give me, if you know what the paro, you know what Parotas rule is, the 80 20 rule. Yeah. Good. Give me one solution, one, not two, that will solve 80% of the Anglophone problem. There's only one. That is, don't do anything else. Just do but that one. Discuss the form of state. Un point entre. Now, so when we are talking about the form of state, what are we looking at? Three things are surfacing now because of the because we have dragged on for long, and a lot of emotions have have, have come up. The people who were enjoying from the highly centralized system, especially anglophone elites who have been eating fat from that from that 
uh, defective system. Nebulous system. Yes. Nebulous because there's no accountability. And the president is aware of it because he, he gives COVID money and the guy just sweep it. <laughs> you know, this one takes billions and disappears. The other one takes billions. I don't want to a few buckets and distribute. At least we saw the buckets running all over the place. But beyond the buckets, we saw nothing. So you see, that's how it's been going. That is, that's the beauty of the centralized system is that people just steal money and they don't account for it. So they just moved an inch away from, the, from that one and moved in the, in the right direction and stopped at what we call decentralization and said they were not going to move from that decentralization. And then when they crafted the major national dialogue to have around that decentralization and any all those eight uh, all those eight um, commissions yes. they were based you know they were they were just cooked in there yes. so that when you when you try to move it doesn't work nothing works so that is the there we have their decentralization a product of major national dialogue with special status and so on whatever it means then we have this middle position where you can call it federation or confederation and when we are saying federation is not an issue of 10 states it's not an issue of four states it's two states no it's two states forget about the four states forget about the 10 states that is, that is banditisma then the people the anglophones who were hoping that there would be a solution and waited for too long and had a lot of adrenaline running through their nerves and, they, and then they said enough is enough they went over the are extreme secessionist and they picked up this name amber so these are the positions decentralization federation federation slash confederation and then cessation these things have to be discussed on the table and we will be explaining this the people who are for cessation will be trying to explain why is it that they want cessation and someone might try to explain to them, well, in as much as you feel that way, probably is not yeah. the best. Then, of course, the people who are coming with decentralization, probably they can say something about it, but we have seen the fruits of decentralization, and we say that it's not useful. That's not how we solve the problems of Cameroon. So these are the issues. And there are just very slight differences between federation and confederation. Some people are unnecessarily afraid when they hear the word confederation. They say it's a step away from secession, which is not true. <laughs> you know, when you have these people who are so dishonest, when they want to mess up things, they always, you know, try to cook things. But I think that's the way to go. Okay, um, yeah. before Barry and Kia uh, react, I just want us to get to Barry and talk so that you react to what he will have to say too. Because yeah. you have the legal mind and you add to that of uh, Dr. Nick, uh, Barry and Kia, I want us to get um, the the contest. Can this decentralization, which everybody is saying that is not possible, can it can it work? Can it work in protecting common law in Cameroon? Can it work? Uh, uh, let's go back to the origin of common law in Cameroon. Common law was better practice in the English part of Cameroon when we had a federation. And it could fit better in that federation. Now, with this new system of decentralization, there is going to be disorder. There will be going to be the, the, the kind of lack of authority under the decentralization system. I think under federation, there will be autonomy, respect for the powers of the judiciary, it will no longer be an authority, it's going to be a power. So if we leave it at the level of decentralization, it's going to be more an authority than power. So I would prefer, and I think most common lawyers would prefer that, it should be a power under the federal system of government. For you to have a common law judge, there is a trend. You must prove your worth, and in your society, you are elected by your own people from what you are. It's not by, by the, the, the pen and paper of a leader to say, you are now the president of this court or that of that court. No, the people should determine who should be their judges. It will have a better justice system if it is done that way. Yeah. I want us to uh, come back to you, um, why he's on standby. Maybe a reaction to that and that of Dr. Nick before I ask my question, if there's one. Yes, yes, I think that uh, I agree totally with Dr. Nick when he said that this, those who fear, those who, or those who have been benefiting from this system we call the nebulous system, are the ones who are like putting the pecs against this whole idea of going back to a decentralized, I mean, to a, to a federal system. Because, and I agree again with him very well that a workable structure for Cameroon will be for us to go back into this two-state federation. And that within the, the federated states, you could have this decentralized system working in there. But 
for us to move ahead as a people, we must be able to, to address this problem which, is, which has become perennial. You, you call it Anglophone pro problem, call it Ambazonia, call it anything, but that is the problem. You can even call Komolo, is that is the problem that is actually, if you get President Bia up at midnight and ask him, <laughs> what is your problem now? He will tell you that he's looking for a solution in the crisis in the English-speaking regions of Cameroon. Call it any. Some people don't want to hear the word anglophone. They, say they even coined it no so. But <laughs> when it's bad, it's no so. Yes. But when it's good, it's. <laughs> yeah. So I have had the opportunity to work in a system that works. And um, to complement what uh, Barristan Toko was saying, in the Gambia where I worked for 10 years, the president appoints upon the recommendation of the Judicial Service Commission. That's how he appoints judges. For the Judicial Service Commission to recommend you as a judge, you must have been tested. If you are a private legal practitioner, the bar must have recommended you to the uh, higher judicial council, I mean the, the Judicial Service Commission. If you are from the lower bench, that is for, from a magistrate or from the state law office, you must have been recommended by those quarters. So it becomes a system where you have checks and balances. They do a profile check of you. They do the check your, your integrity, your morality. They do that. They call it, some, some people call it they can't get the morality or something. It used to be. It used to be in this country. But it, it's no longer there. And then it's not the, the kind of thing you call higher judicial council where the head of state is the chairman, you know. In the judicial service committee, it is the chief justice who sits as chairman. The minister of justice or attorney general, as it's called in the English expression, comes there only as a person with one vote with all the other stakeholders. And so in that kind of system, you discover that the courts are a power. The courts operate independent from the administrative arm of government. But in this country today, if you look at it, it is the Minister of Justice who is at the head of the judiciary. He gives instructions like you are telling your child in letters. You know? And, and that doesn't work because it dilutes the independence of the judge. It dilutes, it, it creates a hierarchical a subordination system yeah. right you you even discover that in principle on paper uh, the, uh, the the it is the chief justice of the region who is at, who is supposed to be at the head of the judiciary in the region but in practice it is a procureur general he can stop a judgment from being executed he can cause magistrates to be moved like that you know People fear the Procureur General more than, you know, the Chief Justice of the region. And we say that in the, in the, in the days of West Cameroon, when you, you saw the Chief Justice, you knew that you were seeing justice. You knew that you were seeing fairness. You knew the decorum was there. It spoke for itself. And that is the kind of thing that we want to enjoy again. Even before we, 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 you know, we go to the next level, we want to at least see that happening. And I think that a lot of people have the fear that if they go back to a two-state federation, then it is the, uh, uh, um, the English-speaking regions or Anglophones are just one step to secession. Like, like, like the, I think I listened to one, one, one government official who was relating to that as what is happening now in Ethiopia and the Tigri region where uh, the, 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 the rebels, they were, it was a, a, an autonomous region, they just declared independence at once since they had the resources and attacked the federal forces. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what, what, what solves problem, problems is when you give people the options. And I think that when you start putting a taboo on certain issues, it incites people the more. I would have suggested that in 
any future dialogue, it should be clear that the Anglophone region will be given maybe 20 years in their federated state to decide whether they still want to be part and parcel of Cameroon. Yet, let it be inserted that okay, yeah, we are giving you a federal structure, you'll be on your own, but in 20 years' time, we'll ask you the question whether you feel comfortable to be in this system or you want to go your own way. In that way, my brother, there will be conscious efforts from state authorities to ensure that in 20 years' time, these people don't leave. And that would be protecting our identity as a people protecting our own customs and making us feel at home because 90 percent of this issue deals with marginalization deals with marginalization and because you cannot understand that the minister of justice will tell you that oh we have shortage of anglophone magistrates because uh, there are more you know that we cannot we can only post because there are shortage of anglophone magistrates what that says in clear language is that the anglophones have been marginalized in the process of recruitment and 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 then you begin to but what is there what kind of structure can protect can fight against this marginalization it's knowing that okay in any recruitment process we must have this quota of people yeah. and to have that quota you create a section but even in creating that section in the in the NAM, the common law section in the NAM, you discover that some people who are not of the Anglo-Saxon background have been admitted into the common law section because they speak English. I will say that no, it's not about your ability to speak English. Yeah. It's it's a very deceptive process, dishonest process. And where there is dishonesty, there is bound to be chaos, either in the long run or the short run. There must be chaos at some point. Because people will become fed up. But where there is justice and equity, the country will move as one block. Okay. And that is what I'm recommending, that we should do things in a way that everybody feels as part of the whole. Baristan Toko was making reference also to, to the common law division in the, in the Supreme Court. Yeah, what we had asked for was that you know you have like the administrative bench of the supreme court which is headed by it has its but what they gave us was a small division under the judicial bench and then to make us feel a little bit uh, fooled they appointed a judge from anglo-saxon background as head of the judicial bench and then they come in some small thing there they say okay there's some division for of common law you see, my brother, <laughs> what we are trying to say is that let us be honest the way we are talking about the future of this country. We should be honest. We should be able to look at ourselves in the face and say that these things are not working. i tell you one example for which I was almost put on the, in, in, in the guillotine. When there was this recent transfer of magistrates, because I was in the in the national dialogue, and one of the recommendations that was agreed in the judicial commission was that all magistrates from French speaking or this uh, civil law background should be returned to the to the regions of or to back to this other side. So we were expecting to see that happen. When next there will be transfer in the magistrates, and when there were transfers, we noticed that the in southwest as a region yeah we have only libyalem is non-functional yeah. manu is quasi-functional indian is quasi-functional uh, uh, meme is a bit functional and then fako but in fako one subdivision is cut off completely muluka the cut were burned down so there's not justice delivery yeah. so i even wonder what happens there in the past how people have been seeking and obtaining justice in the past past three years but if you come and take the other part of FACO which is Limbe, Tico and Boya right two of the state prosecutors call them state councils of Tico and Limbe 
are magistrates from civil law background. And I made the argument that how our legal departments are manned has an impact on how justice is served. And that if at all there was the argument, the narrative that no, you see these people, they also, they, they, you know, yeah. they can work, national unity, they always want to bring that. Why did they not post them to Bangem, to Mundemba, to Manu, Mm, where you have other money to show that yeah, these are people who are <laughs> ready to work <laughs> it's not a matter it's not a laughing matter it's very provocative issues and for saying that some people think that no you must be you you must be a very bad man how can you say this how can you say this but send them to manfi to libya then yes of course send them to libya then let them go and walk there if they must walk but you know, you know, you you know, you know. If you come to the to the to the uh, uh, judiciary in Cameroon, there's a palance called juicy jurisdictions, and these guys have been sent to the judiciary. <laughs> the judiciary jurisdictions. So you see, these these are things. Baris and Toko will tell you that uh, one day he came to me to complain that he went to Limbe. And the state council told him that because he had sat in a meeting where, uh, uh, and contributed against the fact that some of these magistrates who are of the civil law background should be posted, still maintained in the southwest region. And the man was angry about him. And he tried to educate him that, no, it's not about you. It has nothing to do with you in person. We are talking about a system. A people. <laughs> yeah, it's not about you. <laughs> In fact, we can sit together and drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> we can sit together and eat on the same table. It's not about you. Nobody cares about you as an individual. We are looking at a system, a structure that works and produces solutions to problems. Not one that creates problems. And you see, my brother, these are some of the things that we, we believe. We have to look at them honestly, earnestly, and and provide solutions that are not only oh, solutions that are judicious that can meet you know if 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 we had a federal structure for instance it would be obvious that you can only work in your region or in your uh, 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 state. Uh, state of origin yeah and if you can only work in your state of origin that is already yeah. a solution we understand that you can have uh, a federal government yeah. at the top mm -hmm. where you can tap from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, but even when you are of that structure, you should be in the capital city working there for the collective good of everybody. Because you see, our our notion of justice is different. <laughs> okay, Barista, we'll, yes. be, we'll be coming back to you. I want to also get to Dr. Nick. Um, Dr. Nick, you've listened to the clear examples he has given. He wanted something else and something else is given. And that is corroborating what you said about bad governance yeah. and bad faith. And you are, look, last time, I think on a sister's program, you brought a glass and water, which you tried to explain um, the, 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 the theory in which you feel like the dialogue should take place and how you feel Cameroon should move forward. That's right, yes. The, in reality, you know, when Barista is speaking here, you see, we are not, um, we are just, we tell a lot of lies, that's the problem. And you know, may he rest in peace, uh, his, his eminence, Christian Cardinal, to me, he said, if what you are saying is not what is in your mind, it's a lie. If at all, if you are saying anything, it's coming out of your mouth, and it's what is you in your spirit, is the truth. And so, we will craft a document which says, okay, francophones will be transferred to their region of origin. Yes, just to placate a people. Then when it comes to functionality, you do exactly the opposite. opposite. So it's a lie, and that has been the problem in this country and so again if someone asked you what is the problem in the nation and how are we going to fix it 
you can define a problem if you look at values. Number one, we don't know the truth. Number two, we don't love each other. Number three, we don't respect ourselves and we don't respect others. Number four, we have no notion what merit means. And number five, we have no clue what excellence is all about. And number and, and, and to put it in another way, number one, we don't know how to solve problems. Be no, no, number one, we don't understand problems. So you, if, if Baron Barista was speaking, you see, somebody is trying to solve a problem that creates problems. Creating more you, you understand? <laughs> so we don't understand problems. Number two, we don't know how to solve problems. And when you extend that, you will say we don't know how to create It's not because of bad faith? No, sometimes it's, sometimes you can say bad, bad faith accounts for for seventy percent of it. Oh no, no, maybe not. It depends on what issues we are dealing with. When, when it comes to economics, when it comes to economics in this country, it's not bad faith. It's that seventy percent of the problem we have in economics and development is we don't know. It's ignorance. But when it comes to politics and management, law and so on, the seventy percent are due to bad faith. Is it making some sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. As I'm saying, when it comes to technology, economics, development, creating wealth. Most of our problems, 70% of our problems are due to the bad education and the lack of lack of the technical know-how and how things work. That's why we import rice, we import fish, we import toothpicks, we, we bring Chinese and French people to do everything for us while we are boozing. That's because we don't know. But even when we know, we do the wrong things because of uh, man no man, hmm? affair the village, all those kind of. Things. Because somebody said in Cameroon, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Correct, that is it. <laughs> so, so you, ha so, so number one, it's not what you know, but who you know. And then number two, when you add ignorance to it, then you have something, a boiling pot to deal with, and that is who we are. Okay. Um, I think I moved to Barisantoko. Uh, we we are transiting to the second topic of our of our of our, of our program. But before then, let me take some quick messages. We have lots of messages coming in, and because of time, we will not read them all, so so that the panelists can give an, an explanation to the topic. Greetings, Mr. Javis, and to all your panelists on board in the House of Commons. People often get confused. There is a Southern Cameroon's problem and not an Anglophone problem. The problem stem from marginalization of lawyers, teachers, form of state resource distribution, disruption of our common law practice, etc. So until all these aspects are looked into, look upon, then I think we can know where we are going to. It is coming from Rust. Um, this one, which is coming from Germany, it says. Uh, Good afternoon to you, Mr. Javis. Nice program. Thank you, Dr. Nick. Um, I think now I understand Dr. Nick better. Thank you, by Sankea and by Santoko. We are expecting to hear from Golen Gole as you did announce. Um, where is he? Has he entered Sisongo? Um, this is coming from um jude in germany jude <laughs> we have a problem connecting with him on zoom and we hope that subsequently we will have him on the panel this other one which is his um hello mr javis good morning fine good morning to your fine brains you have in the studio can someone explain to us how bad governance is not connected to the presidency for example we have we are in accelerated decentralization, but the Mosongo Commission is still not accelerated. The presidency doesn't the, the presidency doesn't address that commission. Max from uh, uh, Dosford in Germany, I think we will take on uh, this one. Says uh, good afternoon. I am enjoying the program. I am Jamie Angara, watching from Atlanta in the United States. Uh, those of you watching us abroad, you can still participate in the program. We'll not read all of your SMS. I think we'll go back to the next topic of the day. That should our uh, judges not be vetted. Uh, by Stan Toko, I'll begin with you. Can I, can I just can I just say something? The first person, yes, the first briefly. comment that you read, the, the person was talking about the Southern Cameroon's problem and so on. Let's not go into those polemics. I see. I took time off to 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 to. to paint what the anglophone or the call it the southern cameroon problem call it the anglophone problem call it anything it is that problem that is is, is hurting us it's not the name that matters yeah but yeah, it's yeah whatever <laughs> yeah. what is it that is boiling that is the thing give it a name that is it but be very careful when you want to talk about it 
try as much as possible to break it into the A, B, C. Otherwise, you start naming things. Because, you see, the government uses it as a trick to nail you. You will say that, oh, they gave us a list of 19 things. We even did 22, so we saw more than... You see, when you, you, you put yourself in a place where they, 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 they nail you. Because you ask for you ask for clothes, then they, 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 they gave you, then you gave you a tie. They stand them in, they gave you a tie, they gave you a shirt, they gave you a shirt with buttons, they gave you earrings. No, that's well, which not is, it. Which is not your size. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so when you start going going that line they will, they will nail you stick to the main things once when you're asking something ask somebody for the big things don't name the small small things because that's where when you go to negotiations ask for the big things i told you i talked to you about the parotas rule when you start naming those things they will nail you okay um we'll see men in this topic but we are taking the subtopic which is uh by star uh, kia actually made mention on the fact that uh like the gambia where uh, judges are recommended by i think is is a body judicious service that recommend judges now barristan toko uh, let me get to you is it not time for us to vet our judges let's say the president appoints these judges and they pass through the parliament or senate as we see in other countries like in nigeria and in the u.s i think i think we we, we cannot really hold out that we have the common law should be taken over to the civil law section for the civil law should be taken over to the common law section no what what i what we propose here is if you allow the common law to exist on its own, then we'll have the, the kind of system where you're talking about, where judges are vetted. This part of the country, when you move to this part of the country, you have the common law system as practice at the time in England, and subsequently amended as the times go on. The civil law system should practice as it was inherited from the French and amended as the times go on. But if we try to harmonize them, the hybrid system brings a lot of disorder. Which system is better than the other? And because there's a majority of majority of persons or population in the civil law, it tends to override the common law. And most of the times, most problems are solved using civil law system to solve the common law problem. So it is better we all move in our various directions so that even the international community will have an advantage around the world that Cameroon has by dual system where we take advantage of it for the by the system instead of trying to harmonize it and we move in this first runs and we don't know how it good afternoon um to you all uh, my brother it is lazarus in bamenda this program uh this problem is to finish the country should be i don't understand um uh, <laughs> I, I understand you, but you know, for ethics reasons, uh, I, I don't understand you basically on this. Um, <laughs> but uh, Kia, um, you listen to <laughs> no, please, when you are sending us your, your SMS, be civil, be a Republican, um, so that we get your message. Uh, because I just pick, I will not have the, I just pick if I succeed to pick your message, fine. But thank you. Um, maybe you want to react. I think that um, the issue of vetting judges, you cannot vet every judge in the country. That's not possible. The If you go to other countries like Nigeria and so on, which you know they practice common law in greater details, it is the ch chief justice and the judges of the Supreme Court who are vetted by Parliament because when you become a judge of the Supreme Court you should be able to dispense law without any fear but for the lower rank of judges the Judicial Service Commission meets and vets them at that level is that the case in Cameroon? Ah, that's, I don't think so because you, 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 you see, I followed a recent case in the Gambia where, you know, their own system works a little bit different. There they have nominated members of the National Assembly like you have for Senate here. And the president, after he nominated somebody into the National Assembly, that person, he thought that that person would be you know, align with his own political thought. So, and this nominated member became hostile and more sympathetic with another political... <laughs> with opposition. Yes. 
And so he, he withdrew him. He said he had recalled him. He signed an instrument recalling him and nominating some other person. And he argued that because he had the power to nominate, he had the power to withdraw. To withdraw. And that issue went to the Nationals, to the, to the Supreme Court, for the, for the Supreme Court to take a decision whether the president had the power to do what he did. I want to, to say that for the first, the first thing is that they, somebody will even put that kind of matter in court and it is heard. And they even filed uh, uh, um, an interlocutory application, urgent application, that they should stop the other person who has just been nominated from assuming his seat pending the hearing and determination of the substantive matter. The, the Supreme Court said, no, we are not going to be giving her big decisions. If the man, somebody is going to let him go, they will look at the substantive issue. And the Supreme Court looked and interpreted the law and said that the president was wrong. And that once you have nominated, you cannot withdraw. It's not like appointing somebody in a political office. So once you have nominated, you can And the president obliged himself with that decision. He followed it. You, 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 you get what I'm trying yeah. to say. That, that tells you that when you are vetting people, what, what is the, what, what, what is, what, what is the, uh, why is it necessary to vet? You are vetting so that you get somebody who has a sense of justice. Somebody who is fearless. Who is not bound by any other uh, 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 inclination than the inclination to do justice as you know if you look at the oath which judges take it should tell you they should do justice to all manner of persons without fear favor or ill will yeah. those are the things and if you see that they look at your past decisions they see how you have conducted yourself in the past if you are that kind of judge who takes money from people and you are building a big skyscraper somewhere they say no this guy is not fit right so so i think that that is the whole process but again something that is connected with this vetting process is the fact that you see in this country people move from the bench in any direction. Today you can be a magistrate in the magistrate court. Tomorrow you are in the court of appeal. Then they bring you down to the high court. And then they send you to the Supreme Court. And they bring you down to the to the court of appeal again. It's it's chaotic. Or they remove you from the legal department, bring you to the high court bench. The next transfer, they send you to a small parquet again somewhere else. It's chaotic. It's chaotic. And that is why for us. From the common law tradition it becomes difficult we don't even know how to address you because if you have been a judge in the court of appeal you should be called lord justice now they bring you to the high court how should i address you <laughs> <laughs> for my lord it's, justice it's, it's, it's a practical problem it's a practical problem and you see this is because the way that this country has structured its justice system. It is, um, it revolves around, you know, uh, the people you know. Yeah. Like you said, because in a functional system, you know, when you are in the magistrate court, you aspire, you work hard to be elevated to the high court bench. When you're in the high court bench, you work hard, hard. you aspire to be elevated. And each of these layers comes with a different sense of respect. Even your pay package is improved. I told you that I worked in Gambia for 10 years. And I was a magistrate. And after like three years, I was elevated to the high court bench. When I saw my first salary into my account as a judge, I went to the, to the, to the judicial, uh, judicial secretary. To say that I'm not sure if they have made an error, but I've seen something. It was like five times my salary as a magistrate. It was like five times. <laughs> <laughs> and then they give you other attachments, right? You have residential guards, you have office guards, you have a car, official car, you go to work with a driver and an orderly. Now tell me, why would you not work hard? 
to be appointed a judge. And the day you are found corrupt, you are arrested and tried. I, I, I sat on a case in which the immediate past chief justice was being tried before me on corruption in the Gambia. And he was jailed. So that tells you that, that that's a system that works. That's a system that works. Tried in the ordinary courts. But in this country, if you were even to make a complaint against a magistrate, you don't know where it will end. Nothing happens to it. We have people who have committed 80% of the offenses in the penal court. They parade themselves as magistrates. The highest thing they will do, they say, no, they will not give you grade. So you remain as grade one magistrate for 15, 20 years. And you abuse the law. We have people who have been tra trafficking in drugs. I mean, magistrates. It's public knowledge. They will arrest you and then they do some things, some funny things. They say, no, man, 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 man. And then they say, no, you're still grade one. You will not go to grade two. <laughs> <laughs> that is not punishment. That's not punishment. They say, no, 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 we'll not give him grade. And what, by not giving him grade, you still allow that man to wear the robes of justice. Of justice. <laughs> what justice do you expect from him? So, you, you see, my point is that it is we should know why vetting is it's important. important. We should know why vetting is important. It is to ensure that the caliber of people who are called upon to serve justice to people are people who can do so without fear or favor, ill will, or, you know, because you would have expected that in a system like us, when you have a man, a judge, right? Yep sitting in the high court as vice president would prefer to be transferred as president of a magistrate court president of magistrate court because as president of magistrate court he has uh, uh, some small budget that he manages <laughs> <laughs> but as president as george is the president of the high court who has a budget to manage but so this whole vetting process will not make sense if they are not supported with other Benefit. benefits that makes the office more respectable. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Dr. Nick, you want to react? You, you've got the practical. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> well, I, he's taken time off to actually explain to us practically how these yeah. things work. And you say I was laughing because, I mean, like I told you, I don't, I don't know very much how that house works. So I was in the learning process, like most. But from people. your from your your confederation, yeah. this can survive. Well, from my confederation, I'm saying that watch my lips, all problems will be solved. <laughs> 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 so you see, <laughs> all problems will be solved. And that said, to be, because I know we'll soon be leaving the studio. I'm sure we have about 15 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because I was going to say that we have lots of problems. The president is aware of this. So many problems. And let me continue to remind our people that a dialogue is coming to which our, our two uh, barristers will be <laughs> invited. <hopefully>. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody uh, sent me a message just now. I think I have that. When is that coming? And forget it. Wait, wait, wait first. Eh? Let me get it right. We are going to have a dialogue. A, an inclusive dialogue, a genuine dialogue, a dialogue organized in truth and in love with respect, and there will be no taboo subjects. And after that, there will be reconciliation and there will be unity in the nation. And you know, the, 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 the life of the nation will be organized around good politics, good economics, good development and all of this packaged in a good education. Because like I've said before, if we have failed in the nation is because the education has failed for 60 years when we don't have the right education. And so all of these things will be corrected soon. And before you take the microphone, let me add again, number one, that we are in a bad, bad, uh, in a, in a bad season these days with COVID-19. COVID-19 is real, it kills, it makes people sick, and it's hurting the economy. Say so let's let us while we while we keep arguing about the vaccines whether they are good or not whether the minister actually took the vaccine or not that's not the issue. Let us be protecting ourselves and realize that if you die is your family that loses. And so let's just, let us practice those barrier methods. Wear a mask. 
wash our hands or use sanitizers keep you know keep distance in, uh, here in the studio we are just three of us and we are two meters apart because we have to be speaking in a way that you and you we all have our face marks <laughs> yes, yeah, we do. so uh, thank you very much i hope that uh, i was able to communicate yeah i'm you. sure um, we have five minutes i've been told and i want us to manage this five minutes um let's get um let's get back to barisan toko i want him to explain to us briefly if uh 70 percent if what we have now and i also want barisan Kia to also uh handle this briefly as to the common law the government says a lot has been done so far these are legal practitioners and you were of the national dialogue and barisan Kia too is practicing to uh barisan toko too is practicing how many percentage do we have is it 70 percent so far I, I will not say that we should hit our chest because so much is still to be done. So much is still to be done. We need to be comfortable with what we have in this part of the country. Of the country. We need to be very comfortable. What used to happen, uh, gentlemen, in our courts in this way, the judges were independent. The legal department would take cases to the court and we have the judgments without fear or favor. We used to have advocates who were fearless. But with the kind of system we have now, everybody moved in his own direction, in his own side. So I think, I think uh, so much needs to be done. And where does it start? If you start from us, we are the ones to give what we want, not for the government to give us what they want. Let me give you an example. If we have uh, a judicial committee that supervises the works of the judges, the works of the legal department, and that's where we start vetting the serious judges, positioning them, asking the population, the population to agree on who is the better judge to the other one. So with a judicial supervision system, it will be easier and better managed, which is autonomous, not, not, not controlled by the government. But what we have now is we have a system where the Ministry of Justice is the supervisory authority, not only of, of the judges, legal department, but also of the Cameroon Bar Association. Okay, um, briefly, by Sankia, uh, you want to react to that? <laughs> uh, I think I think I have not much to add because uh, what he said is perfect. But if I may say something before I see we are already against time, um, I would just suggest that you see to heal this country and make it move again as one, I urge the people in authority to do a very broad based amnesty, release everybody in jail. I hear uh, Dr. Nick saying that there will be dialogue in due course. You cannot dialogue with people in jail release everybody grant amnesty reduce the tension in the country if possible create a truth and reconciliation commission that should be able to look at into this it has happened everywhere look at the Oput oputa panel in, in nigeria let him look into these things and and, and advise give a general advice on what to uh, you know how we can move forward Otherwise, I tell you, we'll be coming back here each day to come and ask how what percentage has been covered in in, in, in pacifying the anglophone problem, <laughs> and we'll be on the same position. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, we are slowly out of time. Good afternoon to you in the studio. Please ask Doctor if he is going to be our next president because the way he is talking about dialogue, unity, and other things that is going to happen is um, is it with this very regime or how? Please. Help us, Prince from Limbe. I just had to take that message because. <laughs> no, all I can tell you that there's going to be dialogue that, like, it has never been before in the nation. Because, like I said, for 60 years, we can't name one on our fingers anything that we have done with excellence. And I probably think that we are going to start, you know, to, to demonstrate excellence in this country through that dialogue. And there will be reconciliation and there will be unity. And that said, you know, when, when, when Barrister was talking a moment ago, he, he said that they should be, people should be released from prison, this, 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 all of that. And all I can say is that, you know, for, it, for the dialogue to be the dialogue, everybody will be there, including those who are in prison. And things will be done properly because the war is helping nobody. 
and uh, you see, if you read again the, the letter that those the, 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 the members, the of, members Parliament of Parliament wrote, signed. you can see that they left the problem and they were skirting off in the in the wrong direction. Just like the major dialogue, they left the problem, but this time we will face the problem squarely and nail it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Vice uh, uh, and Toko, thank you very much for coming. I, I want to say this, and I'll say this loud and clear. The judgments in the common law sessions are written based on the law and the conscience of the judges. And we have case reporting where we have similar cases that can be adjudged with the same facts and the same judgment. But we have a problem. When you have an appeal at the level of the Supreme Court, or the level of the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, it's very difficult to find out what the situation of the law is, what the position of the Supreme Court is. We only hear that judgment has been given in the Supreme Court. It does not, the judgment most of the time in the Supreme Court do not tie on the facts and the law. It's mostly the mindset of the civil law of the that's why we say, if we allow the Supreme Court to have a common law division, not the common law, the common law bench or division, not the common law section, which is autonomous, where the judgments from the Court of Appeal go to that same court, so that we have a final decision on cases that come from this Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh Barista and Kia for coming. Um, probably last word to the public and anything one the public to know as far as healing the nation is concerned. Yes, like I said, I think it's only two things I can recommend. You know, we cannot be discussing while key stakeholders are in jail. Grant general amnesty and then do a truth reparation and reconciliation commission in this country. That will be able to bring back healing and peace. Okay, Doctor Nick, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, we st uh, the Cardinal will start his uh, journey to the world of no return, and he'll be buried on Tuesday. And uh, his soul rests in peace. And he had those values that he stood for. He had the fights that been fighting. It's not because he's dead that those fights are over. No, it's just beginning. And um, so um, we, are, we, many of us, are committed to continuing with uh, his ideologies of truth, of love, of respect, of merit, of common good, and all these things. And to say again that President Paul Bia is committed to a dialogue, a reconciliation, and unity in the nation. And before you know it, Cameroon will be booming again. Vice Antoko, thanks for, for, for being there. Thank you. Of course, thank you for watching rebroadcast for of this same program. It's today 10 p.m. rebroadcast 10 p.m. today and tomorrow 9:30 p.m. rebroadcast every Sunday 12 to 1:30 p.m. every Sunday. www.btmediagroup.net is our website. YouTube channel is BT Media Group on YouTube, Facebook page My Media Prime follows on Twitter, My Media Prime on Twitter and uh, I leave you with this no matter the matter what matter is your matter. No matter the matter, what matter is your matter. And what should matter for you is that the truth is God. You can only kill the teller and not the truth. When you kill the teller, the truth remains to haunt you. My name is Tamai Javis from Cameroon's Economic Capital Duala, Feng Gujombange. We say au revoir.